Herman Schrader on the Dirty Mo Media platform from the middle of America in St. Louis, Missouri, starts right now. Well, here we go. <laughs> All right, I got to address this before the show even starts. Uh, I know I see you staring at that red dot on my nose. Uh, I ran my well, nose. Yeah, yeah, you got it working. I, ran, I knew that. I ran my nose into the race car. So, uh, I, and I did not shave. Do you still like me or not? <laughs> I ran my nose of the race car into a couple things. Well, we'll talk about that later. But yeah. I, I'm thinking, you know, I just was tired this morning. I'm like, you know, Dale Jr., he wears a hat. He's never shaving. I, I'm like, let's let me try it. But Kenny, if Rusty is watching this, do you think you'll be mad at me that I did not shave? What chances do you think Rusty's watching us? Mm, that's not a, too good. Not too good. <laughs> you never I know. I think too good. Yeah. Well, so I'm not shaving the day, and I got a cut on my nose. I'm all messed up. <laughs> But I, but I'll survive. Boy, you you look good. What you look shaven? Oh up. yeah, yeah. Well, I shaved last night. I had to get up like you. I was up early this morning. Uh, yeah, I was down the shop about quarter to seven. Then had to go up and do a little running and going South Bend, Indiana. Drop off a race car mm. uh, that's going to Stremmies to get fixed. So got a lot to do, man. Go racing this weekend. You're you're not going to get that one by me. What what? What are we fixing? <laughs> well, that that car I tumped over a couple weeks ago at Batesville. Uh, Batesville, Arkansas. I turned over my IMCA car, and we just want to get it checked. Yeah, I understand. Okay. You know well, why I turned it over, don't you? Well, you know, so, they say, how do you get along with uh, Rusty and Schrader? I said, well, I don't ask him about the bad stuff, but why'd you tip it over? <laughs> well, because I ran out of track, traction, and talent all at the same time. Well, you, so you taught me this. You lost traction. <laughs> I, I lost traction. Then well, I ran out of racetrack, and then I did not have enough talent to save it. So the three T's. Hey, okay, what are the three T's? Track, traction. You run out of track, uh, traction first. Yeah. And then you run out of track. Yeah. And somewhere right in the middle oh. between traction and running out of track. You didn't have enough talent to keep it from running out of the track. That hence you either go off the track or you hit the wall. So track talent or traction talent track, it probably ought to be. There it is, everybody. If one thing you take away from Herman Schrader, the three T's. Ne never be afraid to make fun of yourself. Hey, what happened, Joe Bob? The three T's. Track, yeah. talent, traction. <laughs> yeah. It reminds happened. me, yeah, it reminds me of uh, the three B's. I said, what are what are the, Kelly Shyrock taught me this. I said, boy, my car's just not handling very good, Kelly. Kelly Shyrock, one of the greats out of Iowa. He says, uh, your car's got something broke, bent, or bound up. Hey, look at us go with the. Alphabets here. Well, Felix Sabatis <laughs> taught us about the three F's, but we won't go there. <laughs> that oh, that yeah. was the most important thing I've learned about letters, but we won't go there. But you know that they, uh, when I filled in for Dale Jr., I didn't cuss whatsoever. And they said, no, you can cuss. They'll edit you out. I said, oh, so I just started cussing, but then I felt bad. So yeah, I think everybody knows the three F's and if they don't, Call Schrader, he'll tell you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, let's get this show started. So um, we love this part. Uh, crack Kenny. Uh, we're going to try to crack Kenny Schrader. This is our second Herman Schrader show, and I think everybody's got the hang of it. It's fun. All right. We got four jokes, and these are all coming in via social media now. So we're going to. Thank you through your call letters. All right. Uh, big Block 5400. Uh, sounds like he wants to be Big Block, uh, but it's Big Lock 5400. All right, Kenny. 
pirate walks into a bar with a steering wheel in his pants. Bartender asks, what's with the steering wheel? Pirate says, "Ah, it's driving me nuts. <laughs> I like You're that smiling, one. smiling. Yeah, I like that one. That's pretty good. <laughs> Drive them. Oh, nuts. wow. We have cracked Schrader already. Yeah. No, that's pretty okay. good. Second one. Sean's 57 Garage. I applied for a job as a waiter. I told them I can bring a lot to the table. Okay, so he he brings food to the table. <laughs> a lot. A lot of food. Up. Yeah. Okay, well, that was just got you kind of questioning it. Number one wins so far. The the number the one pirate. The pirate is the best. Okay. You Better. Got, you got the word steering wheel and nuts in them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much gonna hey, win you, no matter what. You, you you can tell we're a bunch of rednecks. Hey, yeah. man, it's like, like Beavis and Budhead. He, hey, he said nuts. <laughs> All right. But yeah, yeah you, you know it's true. We're just okay. we can't help it. Uh, I wonder what Roger Penske would think right now if he was listening to us. Do you, do you think he'd say them boys are silly? Well, fortunately for us, well, unfortunate, but at this point, we're not on his – Potential Radar. driver list, so we're okay. <laughs> All right, we're good. Uh, better to be fit. That's at better to be fit. This is a long one. A rope walks into a bar and the bartender says, we don't serve ropes. The rope walks outside and ties himself into a bowline and messes up his hair. The rope walks back in and the bartender says, hey, aren't you that rope? The rope says, no, I'm afraid not. It's a long joke that really is not that funny. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. I mean, it'd be good in, you know, eighth grade, sixth grade, fifth grade, whatever. They, they, okay. they, they say if you're drinking... It could be funnier too if you, maybe we had some more beer. Okay, so right now the pirate wins. Okay, one last one. Pamela Malloy, 9778. Why couldn't the toilet paper cross the road? It was stuck in a crack. <laughs> Child's play. This is all right, everybody. You got to up your game. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. But you cracked Schrader. The pirate walks into that a That was bar. good. That was good. Yeah. Well, Big first lock. off, a pirate can walk. You know? I mean, a pirate can walk. One leg. Rope can't walk. Toilet paper can't walk. I just, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But but it is funny because, like you said, it said nuts. Steering wheel and nuts. So thank you, Big Lock 5400. That was really good. Uh yeah, I think we got to get a little more aggressive with our jokes. So send us some nasty ones in, everybody, and we'll we'll decide. <laughs> okay. Um, the show moves on. I love this segment. What did we do over the weekend? Uh, so, Kenny Schrader, what did you do over the weekend? Well, you know damn well what I did. I went with you. And we yeah. went to Springfield Raceway in Springfield, Missouri for the Turkey Bowl. Our buddy Jerry Hoffman runs it. 404 cars. Wednesday, wow. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, you only had to be there. Like our classes, we ran uh, A mods and B mods. You only had to be there. Friday and Saturday. Thursday was an optional test day. But, I mean, it was over late Saturday. It was over at 1.30. One of the reasons it's over so late is, besides the 404 cars, which they didn't <laughs> all run on Saturday, but Jerry ta takes unbelievable pride in his surface, and he wants them racing on it 
everywhere. And there's a fine line when it gets slick and you're racing everywhere because there's no grip everywhere. Now, I don't know how quick that track will take rubber and get one lane, but he's going to make sure that doesn't happen. So he spends a little time on track prep, and it shows up in the races because they run from the very bottom of the inside of that track up to the top. So we, uh, a friend of mine, Glenn Styers, drove one of our cars. He finished 11th. We had 76 B mods. We, we finished 8th. Uh, you, you ran good in the, in the, in the mod race. I, I want to talk about you for a minute. Uh, I'm a race fan too. They, they put a little ledge around that racetrack on purpose. And Jerry Hoffman is able to keep that ledge strong. It doesn't go away. I watched you, you drew bad. You started like almost last in your heat race and you got up to what? Fourth third uh, but that was yeah, no. i mean i drew good because it's passing points so you want to start oh. in the back well yeah, you, you want to start, show you want to start in the back and you want to roll the dice that you'll be good enough and you only got 12 laps that you'll be good enough to get there and we got third and need to get to second so they go top eight in points at the end of your heat races are locked in the race. And if we had finished second, we'd have been on the pole. But oh, wow. we were on third, and that put us 11th in passing point. So we had to start in the pole of a third B main. But one thing I like about you, Kenny, is uh, you run that ledge. Jerry Hoffman puts a permanent mm. like ledge, like a cushion, but it's rock solid. And when I watched you come from the back of that heat race, you were patient with that one old boy. Yeah, he was kind of. <laughs> that, yeah. that was our downfall. But he would, I mean, I never had him cleared. I can't, you can't really run over him. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. You really do got to hold your lane or else you're loading up and then you don't got a chance. But how do you know where that ledge is? I, I'm afraid to get that high. Boy, you ran that thing and turned three and four. It looked like you were going to go over, but you never did. <laughs> it's got a lot of laps with the cushion. You know, I mean, yeah. I grew up in midgets and sprint cars, and you lived off the cushion. Just kind of know where the cushion is. And it's not as important anymore because the cars have got more side bite, more drive. You drive them straighter than you used to. Uh, so that cushion isn't the almighty like it used to be. But when there's a cushion there and it's a bull ring, it's going to be the fastest way. Yeah, it really is. And and then uh, before we get to me, I noticed that you and Ann were together. You had the motor home there. Uh, you enjoy that. You you and her really bond. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks to me like you're having fun. Are oh, you? it was, yeah, it's good time. You know, we went racing the racetrack for three days, camped out with some friends. Uh, it's great, you know. We can be better. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, Kenny Wallace, what'd you do over the weekend? Well, self, <laughs> I did what Schrader did. Uh, so I wanted to go up there because you love that racetrack. And we love Jerry Hoffman. We want to support him. And they got the rules really good. Uh, they got my UMP car. Did you like that? Did you like how they I think mixed the rules, rules are great? One of the reasons that everything works so good is the racetrack. Yeah, it's true. wide and slick and, you know, it's not a stop and go big power place. So it's easier to combine rules there and they have them. They have an excellent program right now. Yeah. So uh, I was very lucky, um, 54 cars in my division and, uh, we ran, second in the first one and then we won the second one that put me third in points and i finished fifth in the big race and uh i couldn't have been more happy because i didn't know what to expect and uh you know so it, uh, i lost 20 hours aren't you oh god i lost 20 hours i had bet jeff labob what do you think i bet him saturday be night and we didn't we had the wrong lineup but i had bet uh jeff labob that you'd outrun uh, 
Zach Vanderbeek. And, you know, Zach's been running great, you know, so yeah. I knew it'd be tough because you both, you both were good and you ran third and fifth, I think. So yeah, I mean, it was close, but just remember that next time we eat lunch. I lost yeah. 20 bucks, Ernie. I'll, I'll, I'll buy you. Oh, oh God, that reminds me of the story. Here we go. Like, you know, we know what we're going to talk about, but now you bring it. Let me tell this real quick. For anybody that ever thinks you're going to outwit Kenny Schrader, Schrader oh, and I, no, you're going to win all the time. No, no. We're, so I, I get in this. I'm living in North Carolina. Kenny Schrader's living in North Carolina. And we get in his white van, and we're all going to go to the Talladega Dirt Track early January. And, Ice Bowl. Ice Bowl. Yep. Yep. And we pull over to a Hardee's. And I'm so thankful that Kenny Schrader's letting me ride with him. We're going to meet my race team at Talladega. My race team's coming out of St. Louis. And I'm so happy I say to Kenny Schrader and his team, I'm like, I'm buying breakfast. Schrader's like, okay. I'm like, that's really nice of him. So I buy breakfast. It's No, you, you, you want to buy breakfast. breakfast. Yeah. I bought yeah. breakfast and lunch. They're the cheapest. So we get to dinner that night. And the bill's like a hundred and something dollars. Schrader says, okay, you're buying dinner. I looked at him. <laughs> I said, you son of a... <laughs> he, well, no. Kenny, Kenny Schrader would not that. let me buy breakfast or lunch because he knew that those are the cheapest meals of the day. So you're smart. No. And, and, and you taught me a lesson. Always buy breakfast and lunch. Let, let the other dummy... Oh, I got no By problem dinner. buying dinner. It's just, <laughs> it's just we were going to hook you for dinner that night. You, you did good. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, I, um, I I'm thinking of of uh, my dad right now. You know, you said that you thought I would outrun Zach Vanderbeek, and thank you for that compliment because Zach Vanderbeek's a badass, and um, we were fast. But my dad would say right now. Why? What happened? Why'd you run fifth? So, Dad, here's the reason. Uh, obviously, lost Dad uh, years ago, but I did not. When when Jerry reworked the track, it put me into warp speed, yeah. and I was loose. I just, I was just sideways, and uh, but we finished fifth, and uh, so it was a good weekend for me too, Kenny. If it. And, uh, wouldn't have been for them four other cars, you would have won. Damn it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Treb Jacoby, a couple of years ago, he goes, we run second. We were really good. I said, you know, Trev, if I wasn't there, you would have won. Yeah. <laughs> right. Everybody always says that, you know. Uh, we run second to the best in the business. I'm like, yep. It sounds like Schrader. If that guy wasn't there, you would have won. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, you all know what we did over the weekend. It was a good time once again. Uh, thank you, Jerry Hoffman, Springfield, Missouri, Springfield Raceway, the Turkey Bowl. It was awesome. The 18th um, annual. It was the 18th annual Turkey Bowl. And we don't count people's money, but we sure try. And, buddy, that place was packed on Saturday night. Woo! Yeah. yeah. You know, but it took it – took, a number of years to get there. Uh, yeah. He was lucky. Uh, he said he really only lost the first year, but then you go a, a number of years where it still wasn't worth doing. You're, you're uh, in the building program, but he's got it going now. But then the thing about that event is the weather's got to cooperate. It was nice and sunny in the daytime. It was great. Maybe, you know, low sixties. They got, it got cool at night, but people knew that and they were bundled up. But you know, that's that race has been rained out, snowed out, whatever. But they they did good this year. That reminds me of the chili bowl. Everybody's like, "Oh my it's god, never been killing rained it!" Out. Yeah, never been rained and, out. And the first couple of times they ran the chili bowl, it probably didn't make any money. No, um, it lost. You bring up a good point. When you hold an event, sometimes it takes time to make the event great. Um, mm -hmm. Before we move on, let me quiz you. You've, you've run about every dirt race there is. What, 
what one event comes to your mind that started out slow and then in its 15th, 20th year, it's like, oh my God. I mean, is it the turkey bowl? Is it the chili bowl? Speaking of bowls, well, they're both bowls, turkey bowl, yeah. chili bowl. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't was know. it doesn't make, it, you know, all those good, good shows. I mean, the world 100. Oh my gosh. What's that's turned into the King's Royal. Uh, you know, Eldora's grown some, some huge shows. Our, uh, uh, Iron Man 55 at Peebley is, is grown unbelievable. Massive. So, uh, I don't know. It just, uh, you get a good show and biggest thing is the date. You know, you got to have a date of, that kind of stays off a lot of other things. Chili Bowl, obviously January, it works indoors. Uh, World 100 is the second weekend, September. That's just when it is. Everybody stays off of that. In the fall, like Turkey Bowl, it's just, you know, it's a crap shoot on the weather. But when you catch it, it's great. So I don't know. It's There's no rhyme yeah. or reason. Yeah. Let that be a lesson, everybody. You got to have enough money to keep on rolling. It, it, what's the old saying? If you don't first succeed, try again. So yeah. <laughs> But spend you got to have money. more money. Yes, yeah, spend, spend more, more money. money. All right. The, the most controversial part of the show. Moving on. This is NASCAR Hot Topics. Drum roll, please. And boy, Kenny, you would think there's no NASCAR. Uh, the NASCAR season's over. Of course, we got the banquet coming down the road. But boy, there's plenty to talk about. Um, let's talk about Tony Stewart first. Mm -hmm. 53 years old, uh, he marries Leah Pruitt, uh, husband and wife. She takes a break from drag racing so they can have a baby. And they have the baby. And oh my God, it's a boy. And they just have the baby and it's Dominic James Stewart. So you know Tony Stewart as good as anybody. Will, will this baby, will this baby change? Will it change Tony Stewart? Oh, baby changes anybody. You know, I mean, that, that's that's a huge change. And uh, at this point in his career and at his age, yeah. you know, it. I mean, it'll be easy for him, easier for him to make that change, I believe. You know, hell, I don't know. Yeah. You know, that'll be up to him. But, you know, if, yeah. Your mid twenties and race and race and race and that's it. And it, you know, it, it's it's more of an inconvenient. You, not that you don't love the baby, but it's like, wow, this is really screwing stuff up. You know, this is a big change. <laughs> I can't hear yeah, the and, you know the NHRA schedule. I don't know how many events it is, but yeah. it's not thirty eight weekends. So yeah, I mean it'll it'll be neat. I'm I'm anxious to watch him. Yeah, I uh, I really liked uh, Bob Pockrass from Fox Sports. He went out to Pomona and did a lot of videos. So uh, Bob Pockrass, he worked so hard. He's got this video on X. It shows Tony Stewart putting some red tape above his name. So, you know, it says smoke. So above his name, he puts some red tape. And Tony writes, Dad. And I thought, wow. I told my wife, Kim, I said, I think Tony's getting ready to change a little bit. Um, yeah. That, that is really cool. And he said, let me look at my phone here, Kenny. He said something that I thought was really cool. Um, he, ba he basically said that uh, really changes you. You know, that's pretty much what, it, what his quote was. And uh, uh, so that's awesome. Okay, Tony Stewart and Leah, they have a baby. It's a boy. Too good to be true. Hey, let me ask you this. If it would have been a girl, would that have messed yeah. things up? No, nah, it don't make any difference. It's <laughs> it a baby. Doesn't. It doesn't make yeah. any difference. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we put that. Yeah. It, it, to me, I want, you know, I didn't care. I wanted healthy. But right. our first one was a girl, and I was pulling for a girl because I didn't want a boy that wanted to race. Oh, I didn't want. Expensive. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go through that. So, yeah. So he he can go through that. Yeah, there's so much to say too because when they get married, 
the bo- the no, it was the girl. The girls pay for the wedding. I paid for all the weddings, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, moving on. Um, this one caught me off guard. There, there's a lot of hot topics, everybody. So stay tuned. We got more after this one. Uh, Martin Truex and Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin has been saying all year. Okay, we all know that Martin Truex has retired from NASCAR cup racing he says i'm done i'm not running any more nascar but denny hamlin says that 2311 will fill you a car anytime you want a, a car let us know so my wife hands me her phone last night and there's a little article in newsweek so don't blame me everybody blame newsweek kevin harvick is quoted And I thought it was very interesting. Kevin Harvick says, no, when you're done with NASCAR Cup, you're done. Look at what has happened to our hero, Jimmy Johnson. So we know Jimmy. We love him. He's great. But it seems like, Kenny, when you step away from the Cup Series, the highest form of motorsports in America, that it's very hard to come back in. And what Harvick's saying is, we, we all admire Jimmy Johnson. He can do whatever he wants to do, but he's running, he's truly running 30th to 33rd. Do you, do you believe what Harvick says or? Yeah, I, think? I agree with Kevin. Uh, oh yeah. hundred percent. I agree with Kevin. Several big differences. Yeah. Jimmy left for a couple of years and went Indy car racing. Oh Yeah. He was out of the cup car. He wasn't, you know, I mean, I, I think, I mean, I hope Truex, Hey, if you quit, quit, I have no problem. Yeah. But he come back run Daytona. No problem. Nothing. I mean, um, uh, the, the, the Gallagher team. Yeah. Uh, is, you know, great. They've done good, but Jimmy left Henrik motorsports. Right. Went Indy car racing for a couple of years. All the cars changed. Yeah. And then he came back to a different team. So, yeah. Uh, Martin Truex can get it. He can go to Daytona and be fine. He doesn't need to take 10 weeks off and then go run another race. You know, if I mean, I think race, race or don't. You know, I mean, if you're going to cup race, cup race. If you're in that position, but Martin, Jimmy put, he stacked the deck against himself big time, Right, but you right. Know, coming back with a different team and going Indy car racing for a couple of years. But, but, but Kevin's he's right. Um, it, you know, yeah. He's a racer don't. I, I find that, and this is just my experience. I find that reps, are very important. I'm like you, if if you stay out, I mean, when you're young, you got, you know, there's this new phrase out there. They call, they say muscle memory. Uh, you know, I think I agree with you. Uh, You think that's a new phrase? Well, you know, when they started it or is it, well, it's a new phrase. Okay. Here's when they started using the word muscle memory a lot. Okay. You know, we, we had the gear shifter first, second, third, fourth. So then the cup cars went to sequential shifting. Well, I think it was Denny Hamlin was leaving the pits at Vegas when they first come out with this car. And instead of, you know, going first, second, third, he went, you know, fourth to first or something like that. And everybody Mm -hmm. started going, oh, muscle memory. You know, you're used to first, second, third, fourth. So that's where, (laughs) that's where I come up with that sometimes. Okay. Anyway. I, I yeah I know you're having fun with me. Uh, no, I just I heard a new phrase, so I just want to see where. Oh, this oh, you've never heard of muscle memory? No, I heard of it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Years so ago, I, but go ahead. I just I just think you're the highest form of motorsports. You know, it, you're either in or out. I just don't think yeah. you play around with the Cup Series. And Dale Jr. has said that. And, and I'll tell you what. Carl Edwards, the one that said it best. I mean, Carl says, nope, I'm not coming back. It's too hard. These guys are too competitive. So, all right, well, we put that to bed. Uh, 
Kenny Schrader, myself, uh, Rusty has told me on the side. Uh, Rusty actually said, why is Jimmy Johnson doing that? There's no way. So now it rears its ugly head because it's not an ugly head, but uh, because Kevin Harvick brings it up and Newsweek uh, reports on it. And we found Kim found that article uh, on Facebook. So that's that. Um, all right. See, that's another a social media thing. If we weren't looking at all that stuff, we wouldn't even have to talk about it. We yeah, we wouldn't have no damn topics to yeah. talk about. <laughs> uh, all right. Listen, I know this one's exhausting, but you got to go with me, okay? Uh, be, because everybody in NASCAR is talking about it. I mean, this this is basically the number one topic. The lawsuit. But I say the lawsuit. I mean, Kenny, who doesn't love a, a, a good lawsuit? I mean, they put the stuff on TV. It's courtroom TV. They, they got TV shows every day. Judge Judy. Uh, so all right, let me just lay it out, and you correct me. Uh, 2311 in front row. They're, they're still going at it. Uh, surprisingly, though, 2311 in front row, they come out and they said, okay, we're done with the injunction, and um, we want to move on to the lawsuit. So they announced, and respond right here to me if I'm saying it wrong. I am so tired of getting my ass handed to me. You're not saying it right. So I say it right, but they want me to say other words. In the end, this is what they say. We're still, we're still going through a lawsuit to try to get more money, but we are ready. We will race next year without a charter. Wow. That means, I mean, a charter is, you got to be rich if, if you're going to race without a charter. Give me, give me your take. You got to be rich if you're going to race. <laughs> You have to be richer now. I don't, I don't know all the numbers. I'm not involved, and right. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm okay with that. I don't need no numbers. But let's just say, I don't know. Say the charter's worth five, six million a year. You know, I don't know what it's worth, but it's if it's worth that, yeah. So, and this is, you know, not. I shouldn't even talk. I'm not sure about my numbers, but they're they're going to run as an open team. Well, straight racing can go buy a car and run as an open team. So it ain't no big deal. We were all open teams forever. There's less cars than there used to be. They're rolling the dice, in my opinion. That's all it is. And I hate opinions. But they're just rolling the dice that they're going to run as an open team, knowing they're not going to have the income that they had for, but they're still there, still fulfilling sponsor obligations. And that if the lawsuit goes their way, they'll make it back, is what I think would be happen. But it's okay because I'm not involved and I really don't care. You know, I mean, not that I don't care, but it uh, it's not going to affect me. And these guys can do whatever they, they think they need to do. That's a good lesson in life right there. And, and let me say this, NASCAR announced – Instead of 36 charters like there was this year, next year they're going to 32, and they're still going to start 40 cars. So that leaves eight spots left, more spots for people just yeah. to, you know. Now, let, let me – let me. Ye years ago, we yeah. didn't have charters. We had winner circle. We had uh, plan one, I guess plan whatever it was. And then plan 1A or what it was. Plan 1 was if you were not a winner circle car, but you were, you know, that next group of cars, you got this much money a race. And then that group of cars raced for another purse within the purse. And how you finished, you got it. There was always been uh, incentives for the, for the full-time cars. They've just made it different and guaranteed them in, which they never did that. We used to go to short tracks where they'd take, and this is bef this is back in the day, they'd take 28 qualifiers. And it was only a 36-car field at the big tracks, 32 at the short tracks. 
you go to Bristol or Martinsville, you're going to take 28 qualifiers. There'll be 40 of them there. And some of these guys weren't full-time cars, but they come to those short tracks. You knew that there was going to be a couple of full-time cars that were going to load up and go home because they weren't going to get a provisional. So yeah. it was, it was tough. Now when they have a lot of cars, uh, just because of expense and everything, you see 42 or 43 cars going for 40 spots. Well, that's pretty nail biting. If you're one of those other cars, that's not guaranteed in with the charter, but it's not like it used to be. Yeah. And, and, and we'll put this to bed by saying this. I don't see somebody from St. Louis, Missouri going and buying a next gen car. Cause I talked to Chris Rice we're talking, okay, I want to go to Daytona, $350,000 for the car. And we still got to go to Daytona. So we can know. use my ramp truck. <laughs> we yeah, got to start. Someone, it, it makes me laugh a little bit. They're like, okay, we're going to have 32 charters. And we're going to, you, you can, you know, I looked at every car count this year and I never once saw anything over 39. Uh, now there might be 40, you know, here and there. I'm just saying, and I'm kind of like you. But one thing I've learned, Kenny, when we talk, they'll be quick to point you out when you're wrong, but that's fine. It, it, we're not perfect. But, uh, yeah, Joe Bob is not, you know, back in the day, you'd go buy a used car from Rick Hendrick. It, it, and, you know, you'd rent a motor. And we we could get to Daytona. Uh, I did that with Mikey Waltrip. He put me in one of his cars. And DEI, it was an old DEI car. And, uh, but those days are not going to happen now because, you know, first of all, you can't sell your car because it's a next gen car. It's, you know, you, I, I don't know. Do you know that? I, I don't even think you can sell your car because it's kind of even, even though you own a next gen car. It's well, all, I don't, I definitely well, I'd want to borrow one anyway. I don't want to buy it. Yeah, one. right. Just borrow one. <laughs> so the bottom line is the game has changed. You just don't go mm -hmm. buy a car and go to Daytona. I mean, right. I guess you could, but. You, yeah, it, it's way harder. All right. We just put NASCAR to bed. Those were the three hot topics. All right. We're going dirt racing. Uh, hot topics. Hot topics in dirt racing. Uh, let's go to Sonoya. Uh, Flow Night in America. Michael Rigsby and his boys. Uh, they go down to Sonoya. That's Georgia. And, uh, Ricky Thornton wins. Track was rough the first night. Guess he had a lot of rain. Uh, I've never did you see. Yeah, I, I watched uh, uh, both nights in the hauler and where we're at yeah. Springfield, but I've never had the opportunity to run there, and it's definitely on my list. And every time you see photos or video of it, black and smooth, you know, I mean, just great. Yeah, but I've been told that it doesn't respond good to terrain. Yeah. And Friday night was rough. They had rain Wednesday and Thursday. Mm. Uh, I mean, they got it in, and then uh, we've had that problem Peebly for one night be terrible, and they you know didn't have rain Friday and Friday night and Saturday, and the track crew, which is uh, Bubba Pollard's family. I was going to say that. That's interesting. Yeah. And uh, they, they, Saturday night was like, you know, it wasn't typical uh, for them, I don't think, to track, but it was, it was 95% back. It looked great. That is another subject within itself. Bubba Pollard, he's won everything there is for short track asphalt. What do you know that I don't know? I know Bubba Pollard is a sweetheart. But well, used to what? be Sonoa used to be pavement. Well, I'll be damned. There you go then. Yeah. I'm I say that. I know it it yeah, it was. And uh I don't know how long they've owned it or anything. And Bubba's Bubba's I was at uh, Milton, Florida a couple years ago and uh I know Bubba's run a crate late model more than a little bit on dirt. Uh so you know. Everybody that, likes that, to run them. Yeah, that, that, that amazes me, though. Uh, Bubba Pollard. I, I think that 
that's a chameleon. That means you, old Bubba can fit in anywhere. Uh, yeah, I think that's just awesome. So shout out to Bubba Pollard. Uh, he's won the snowball derby. He's won every race there is for him to, and he works on his own asphalt car, Bubba Pollard mm -hmm. does. So for him to quit working on his car, and there's pictures out there of Bubba on the grader. Um, I just think that, I just find that just absolutely amazing. So I was trying to find the run down here, Kenny. Uh, I know JD run third somewhere in there. Uh, they, they go to, they went to Cherokee yesterday, uh, dirt racing. We're talking dirt racing. They go to Cherokee. Let me look at results here. Uh, Mid East SLS. Uh, Trent Ivy. I don't know him. Do you know him? I know the name. I don't know. I mean, a lot of them guys, but I know the name. He's so, one of the guys that's been around there. Yeah, he, more he must regional, be, I think. He must be good because Davenport run fifth. Chris Madden runs six. It, it's not like it was a weak field. Uh, Nick Hoffman had a flat tire with two to go. He finishes 15th. But uh, they still racing down south just like we were at the – at the Turkey Bowl. So we, we had Sonoya this week. Ricky Thornton wins. Uh, Kenny, I want to talk about Thornton for a minute. I'm not going to be controversy, but I want to broach the subject that he got fired from the car that he was just kicking everybody's ass in. And then he, then he, you know, he was a little cold for a little bit, but like the greats, he's back to hauling ass again. Yeah, well, that part where he might have been – just a little he wasn't cold <laughs> he yeah. was a little he was a little cooler maybe yeah. than than he was and it yeah. was a it was a little short time before you know yeah. before he got rolling again big time i mean he won the uh, that the flow racing in america championship castro championship or whatever yeah. they they call it another 75 grand and yeah. all this money that these dirt teams are winning yeah Sounds really, really like a lot until you set it beside everything they're spending. Then it's not near so much. Man, what a, you know, listen, we're, we're not talking about something that's, that is negative. We had Mark Richards on Kenny conversation and Mark was the one that brought, brought it up because of the cost of metal and tubing. These dirt super late models and these motors you might as well go run the Xfinity series, these motors. I talk to them all. 50, mm -hmm. 60 grand for a motor, a Durham Ford. Somebody goes, Oh, I want 50 grand. You know, well, that's what the motor costs. And then and Mark Richards that builds the rocket chassis, these cars are hundred thousand dollars or more. Um, it really is a tough as you would joke and go, it's a tough business. Oh, yeah. They're expensive, yeah. aren't they, Kenny? Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, you can win a lot of money, but boy, you got to spend a lot of money to win it. And a little bit more on dirt racing here. Uh, when you look at somebody like JD, uh, Jonathan Davenport, Lance Landers owns everything. Mm -hmm. JD drives for a percentage. So, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're the, you're good at math, but for me, that's the only way a driver can, can make it somewhat, uh, I couldn't imagine being an owner driver in super late model. Well, if you're, you know, I mean, you got to, everything's how much money you bring in. So if, you know, if you have a really enough sponsorship and yeah. then you perform well enough, I mean, it's possible. I don't, you know, know how realistic it is, but it's, it's possible, but, uh, I like JD's program. Yeah, you me know? too. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he's Landers, very lucky that uh, Lance and Darla uh, Landers, you know, uh, been behind him and, you know, he does them a great job. Yeah. He's a clean driver. Hardly costs him any money. Uh, you know, we, we got a couple, uh, I call them sugar daddies. That's just an old term for wealthy people that love the sport, whether it's Jeff Hoker, uh, Eddie Petroff. Kenny, you know, that's something people don't talk a lot about in dirt racing. If we don't have these people, uh, dirt racing is lesser for the big boys. Uh, when I see this money they're spending, I, 
who else do you have to give a shout out? I'm saying thank you, Jeff Hoker, Eddie Petroff, Lance Landers. Who else is, is out there that owns yeah. these teams? There's 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 a lot of uh, people that help, yeah. you know, all kinds of different racers throughout the country. And uh, they're they're all important, whether it's, you know, whether it's someone uh, that's spending three or four hundred thousand hours a year in the sport or whether it's somebody that's feeding the team after, you know, the pizza, local pizza place that's feeding the sportsman team after lunch or the four cylinder guys or whatever, after, after the races, it doesn't make any difference. We just need all the help we can get. I've been fortunate to have some. Yeah. And I, and I look at somebody like Casey Kane who owns Brad sweets world of outlaw sprint car. Uh, yeah. We see a lot of the NASCAR guys going, whether it's, you know, the high limit series, uh, but everybody's paying it forward. I guess that's, that's the bottom line. Everybody's <laughs> yeah. paying it forward. It's and, Cause and it's, without... an <laughs> it's an addiction. It's an addiction. What did you tell me one time? Uh, what does something cost you go? I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference. going to do it anyway. Yep. All right. Uh, moving on, uh, our drivers of the week. And, and I want to say, Kenny, that we cannot downplay this. Uh, you you are somebody, and I know you like to think you're nobody, but Treb Jacoby was over the moon, made a big post on Facebook. How this, and I know this is crazy to you, changed his life, he said. You know, he's got a fiance, and they're like, oh my God, oh my God. We were the local driver of the week. So this is a very heartfelt segment that we started. And I want to thank you for adding the local driver because uh, Treb, well, very our local, yeah, it's a, our local yeah. driver. Yeah. So, all right, let's go at it. Uh, I'll go first. Our NASCAR, my NASCAR driver of the week is Martin Truex. Uh, this is the first week. NASCAR is over. Martin retired. I don't care how he did. Just, uh, you know, he gave it his all. He's, you know, he won a championship. Everybody loves him. He's quiet. He's soft-spoken. So congratulations to Martin Truex on a wonderful NASCAR Cup career. Uh, who's your NASCAR driver? Uh, well, I definitely go with you with Arn Martin, but we can't have a driver a week when there's a week and we don't have races. <laughs> well, yeah, but we didn't have good get... this week. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, we don't, you know, we can. Martin Truex is great. You know, and like everything you said, he's just calm. Good. I don't, I've been around Martin a whole lot. I've, I went to his house uh, down at uh, Marco Island last year. I, you know, Polo went, went po yeah, went up and knocked on the door and he came. <laughs> so we oh, went to the back awesome. porch and had a couple of drinks and uh, just talked racing, you know. But he's, I mean, he's cool. I, I like the hell out of him. He didn't have any better week than all them other guys. So yeah. we don't have driver of the week every week. Yeah. For well, we'll try. He didn't have a we'll damn race. Yeah. We'll, we'll try everybody. We want to keep the show rolling. Everybody says, why did you guys start Herman Schrader after the year's over? I said, cause the year's over. We got to put something on here. <laughs> so, well, you know, we know Kyle Bush has announced he's going to the chili bowl. You know, Kenny, it's funny because, uh, I went to the Chili Bowl. Sammy Swindell says, you don't got any business being here. I said, I know. So moving forward, <laughs> it just, you know, people want to try different things. And no matter how it goes, they want to try it. So uh, we will have NASCAR drivers every week doing something, and we'll talk about them. Okay. Um, our dirt, our big-time dirt uh driver of the week and uh i'm just gonna once again this is easy uh ricky thornton he's made an incredible comeback he wins sonoya and then on top of that you know he had to finish it off it wasn't locked up so he had to bounce through those holes the first night when the track was rough because of all the rain uh he finished it off and i remember dale senior saying that to me uh, when I won loud and he goes, you finished it off. You made your pit stop. So there's a, there's a lot to finishing a race mm -hmm. off when it's super rough. 
So congratulations, my driver of the week is Ricky Thornton for winning and, and finishing it off with a tight points margin. Uh, so who's your dirt? Oh, I, uh, I got to go with Ricky uh, on that. But the, uh, was it Trent Ivy? That oh, one, Trent Ivy. Yep. Yeah, yep. That one. Cherokee. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's a big deal. And was that the first father's son? I think I read somewhere father, oh, son, my. uh, we need to check on that. Oh, oh, Somebody uh, can let uh, us know that owned it or what? No, that they both won it before. Oh, okay. I, I, I guess dad had won it in the past. So, uh, I think I read that. I don't know, but, uh, one thing, yeah, one thing I, that's I like about Cher- Cherokee's funny because, uh, Nick Hoffman, he kept posting about it. And, uh, he said that, I'm I'm headed to the place your mama warned you about. Yeah, you know that's what they have, advertised. You you have you have Darlington, the lady in black. Dude, I mean, you know more about dirt racing than me. How how did they get that? Was there fighting mm. there all the time or what? No, uh, I don't know. I I don't know about Cherokee. They they've advertised like that forever. I don't I don't think I've ever ran Cherokee. You know, and they've made it smaller than it used to be. But I know that place in the daytime is a tire eater. Wow. Okay. Uh, breaking news in the garage area. As we're doing the show, I'm going to read it out to you. Okay. Uh, this is per Jerry Hoffman. Jerry Hoffman from Springfield Raceway, the owner. He said, here is a note. Turkey Bowl payout was just a little over $100,000. Tell him I tried to pay you to show up and you said, no, no, I'll pay. Then good old boy Jerry Hoffman said, thank you, Kenny. And then Hoffman insisted uh, on a good time had by all. So, uh, Jerry, he, he he's finally taking a breath. I'd never seen a man work so hard like you said. So just a shout out to Jerry as we're taping the show, and that's, a, that's some good content. Hunt, that's a, that's, that's a, a big payout uh, for a race like that. Yeah. I got 400 of that. Hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got seven. I got seven hundred. Yeah, we got eleven. We got over a percent of it right there. Okay, uh, our local. We're gonna finish off our drivers of the week. Our our local driver of the week. I'm going with Joe Rudy. Uh, Joe owns Al's Auto Service. Three years ago, he never drove a race car in his life, and because of Kenny Schrader. Uh, Schrader uh, gave him one of his race cars and he made the turkey bowl. So, uh, and there were 74 cars and he made the race. So because of Kenny Schrader helping Joe Rudy, uh, him simply just making the race, Joe Rudy is my local driver of the week. Who, Who is your local driver of the week? Terry Phillips. He won the damn race. I'll be damned. Yeah. I, yeah. Terry's right up the road. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a big Joe Rudy fan. Yeah. But I get so aggravated sometimes. And I know it's from being, cause I'm old. <laughs> tell, tell people he spun out twice in the feature. He made the race. So Jeff mm-hmm. LeBob, uh, so Glenn and our car. So us, every, our whole, we had like six St. Louis cars lined up there. Plus there was more there. I think almost everybody made the race. We had a couple that missed, but you tell these guys there's something happens in front and they instantly lock up the brakes and spin out. It's like, listen, the car's 17 foot long. It's only about six and a half foot wide. You got a hell of a lot better chance of going through forward than you do yeah. sideways. Quit spinning out to try to go through the wreck. All you do is hit everything sideways. So I know, but Joe's, you know, he hasn't raced three years. He's doing, he's doing a heck of a job. I still like giving him a hard time, but you know, but, but good advice. Well, I mean, good advice. I want to shoot the gap. I want to shoot. I want to be as narrow as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But I I kind of go with the Terry Phillips, you know, and one of his, uh, bloodline chassis cars that you know 
they they manufacture yeah. or they sell or love Terry Phillips. I brag on him all the time. We we grew up together and uh yeah, that that's a good one. So, all right everybody, I'm leaving Springfield, Missouri. It's southwest of St. Louis. So, for all intents and purposes, uh it's kind of like you saying obviously. <laughs> Intensive purpose, whatever. We're we're, we're traveling north cuz we're coming up the hill. And we're coming to St. Louis and Interstate 44, Old Route it 66. It goes east and west. Yeah, I remember that in the driver's meeting. <laughs> Cherry. So um, everybody's racing. This, this, this highway, why? I don't, I mean, I know there's a lot of highways that are racing highways. We race <laughs> out of Charlotte to Daytona. Everybody races to Daytona. But then there's Everybody some races on the interstates. Oh my God, but this 44, it's, it, I mean, we're racing. <laughs> so I'm racing back home. Got my Black Widow Dodge 2500, you know, Cummins, and I'm, I'm running 80. And we're all running 80, and we're all in the left hand lane. And we come up on this car, and we'll run about 212 mile an hour. And this guy <laughs> is not going to move out of the way. And I'm just watching the show because it's kind of in front of me. So this guy in front of me, I'm kind of pressuring him, you know? So, <laughs> so, so this guy, he pulls out to pass the slow car. So you know what happens? The slow car speeds up. Oh, yeah. Because he's, he's looking in the mirror. You're, you're faster than me, but you're not going to pass me. So he speeds up, and I mean, it's a shit show. And, <laughs> and, he, he, it, and there, now it's death and destruction. So here we know people ride in the left lane, but I want to be specific. If you're going to ride in the left lane and somebody goes, Hey, I'm going to pass you because you're not going fast. Why do you speed up? Why, are, are you hate life that much? You just mad. So that's just my why. I don't want anybody to answer this. I'm just saying why. Well, you just asked you gotta, the question. Why are you a prick? Why do you ride in the left-hand lane? You know, so why? That's my why. Well, why I would say fun. that I would I would say that why do we have to do this why sec section segment? Okay. But come on, when we're coming to my shop a couple of years ago in your same category. It goes from yeah. two lanes to one lane. Well, there's stoplight, mm -hmm. and then it goes two lanes and goes to one. So a guy stopped. And the light turns green when I'm coming up to it. It's red, but it turns green. So I go by him. You got him. Yeah. <laughs> but he, 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 guesses, he guesses it up. Oh, and, boy. And, you know, I'm here. <laughs> and he's here. And he's going to come. And Tom Hannick's riding shotgun with me. Oh, he's we're big. We're in my little Sonoma pickup. And I just keep turning right. Turning right, turning right. Love, and yes. he's like, he's there, he's there. I said, this clown has no idea how many quarter panels a year I knock off. This would just be, <laughs> this would be just one more, but he's one not going to do that. So, but yeah, why? And then yeah. you get to one lane, it goes from 60 to 50 and everybody slows down because they run radar there a lot. So it's like, really? You just had to be in front of me? Yeah. Cause that's what Why? we do. We got to be in front of each other. Yeah. So I deliberately, when I get to there, yeah. I deliberately let off and let people go unless they're acting like idiots. Then I try to run them off or whatever. Good stuff. I like that because, and, and that will get big reviews because everybody races and it's not even about racing. It's that I'm better than you. You're not going to take my spot. They'll pass, uh, they'll pass your ass and get <laughs> off at, at the next exit. Oh, I said, I got it. Yeah. Okay. That, see, that was funner. Is that funner. a word? Funner? Funner? Uh, that was fun. That was fun. You ever okay. like go down the interstate and say, okay, let's, I'm going to pass a hundred cars by the time I get to this exit. You know, that's when you're tired and shouldn't be driving, but so I'm going <laughs> to pass a hundred cars before I get to this exit. How about those new cars now? How about those new cars where they they there's that little coffee mug on your dashboard now, and I I don't know how it recognizes. I, I think if you wiggle too much, 
it says time to take a rest. <laughs> my it, my it, my new my new car is a 2015, so I don't know about any of the new cars. Yeah, well, it it does it. If you get the new ones and you and you kind of go from lane to lane, it says take a break. It has a coffee mug, like pull over, <laughs> get your shit together, <laughs> go at it again. Okay, stories from the past. All right, uh, in the 70s, we're over at Tri City Speedway in Granite City, Illinois, and Dad uh, is driving the number seven car. You know, it used to be. Uh, Rusty's father-in-law. Uh, anyway, dad's driving it. Dad flips Ed Hall. Ed Hall. Dad flips Ed Hall's car and turns three and four at Tri-City Speedway. Well, as you would say, he tipped it over. It was a big deal. So brings it to the pit area. Rusty and Mike take the hood off and start the big race because I guess the hood wouldn't go back on. Broke the hinges. I'm in the grandstands with mom. So yeah, when, when you said seventies, I'm thinking, Hmm, you weren't yeah. very old. Yeah. So, okay. This is my story from the grandstands, but I know what's going on because I work on the race car, but I'm just not old enough to go in the pits. So dad's running this race and the hood's not on the car. I guess car starts overheating. And you know, back then we had glass windshields still on dirt. Cause dad mm -hmm. would take that car from Friday night and he'd go to Lake Hill, you know, on Sunday. So we ran the dirt car on asphalt too. So it starts overheating. It was just the race car. Yeah. That's what, that's whatever the car. you were running. Yeah. I'm painting the picture here. So there's water I'm all over the windshield. You. You're doing a good job. So okay. dad's got it. Go, go ahead. Dad's I don't got, mean to interrupt. It's all right. So dad's got his head <laughs> out you know, he's looking, he's trying to race and dad climbs the front straightaway wall at granite and takes the whole front straightaway fence down. And I mean, it's catastrophic. I mean, you know, right in front of the fans, dad just wipes out the whole fencing. Now they got to cancel the race because, you know, dad wipes the wall out. So mom is delirious. So oh, Russell, Russell, she comes flying out of the grandstands and she, now the fence is down. Now remind you all the wiring, there's wiring too, you know, electrical <laughs> lines. Mom climbs over the fencing, electrocutes herself. <laughs> Dad was just fine after the wreck, but we took mom to the hospital. So <laughs> Judy Wallace, one in a million. And uh, so that's a story from the past. Uh, be careful climbing fences at the racetrack, especially when the electrical lines come down with them. And uh, never I forget love, that. I love your mama. She has a lot of energy. And she had a whole lot back then. I mean, yeah. You didn't want... <laughs> you were better off to have Russ mad at you than you were to have Judy mad at you. I, um, it's sad to say, but when people pass away, the stories come out. And so when my aunt Millie died, my mom's sister, we're sitting in front of the casket and mom starts telling me stories about mom growing up in Baltimore, living above a bar and always putting up for her sister. And I looked at mom and I thought to myself, so that is why. You are the way you are. Mom <laughs> Mom grew up in Baltimore and just fought all the time. So when she came to the local racetrack, it was perfect because that's what you do. You fight, you know, and mom would fight. And, you know, they'd yell in the grandstands at Lake Hill Speedway. I hope Russ Wallace burns to death. I'm like, that's a little severe. <laughs> but mom would go at him. And, uh, yeah, she's a badass. She still is to this day. Mom's yeah. like 87, 87. So, um, she looks great. I agree. She loves you, Kenny, because no, you're always, me. you're always good to my mom. And I, I want to thank no. you for that. No, she loves you. She truly does. She tells me all the time. Um, all right. Do you have any stories? No, it's, you know, 
I just thinking going up and down the road. I'm a 68 Chevrolet, 68 Ford Ranger pickup. When you know they were big trucks and uh, and we're lug, lugging the midget to IRP, Hank Green's midget. Hank Green. Or, Hank Green, I drove for him a couple years. Uh, really, uh, Hank and Rosemary, sweetheart people. Bud Hoppy took care of it. Legendary Bud Hoppy. Yeah. So we're running up 70. I'm tired. We ran somewhere night four. I'm driving. I'm towing the car. But, you know, just a midget. Cousin Mike. Cousin Carl Edwards. His daddy. Right. He's riding beside me we got four of us in a 68 ford pickup and we're cruising up the road and i told mike i said hey i want to get cruise control uh i'll take a nap you you, what? Take, you hold this thing <laughs> well he oh. thinks i'm he thinks i'm kidding <laughs> so I'm, I mean, I can fall asleep and, you know, I can fall asleep any place, anytime. There's pictures out there yeah. of you sleeping in your cup cars. <laughs> so I, you know, he holds the wheel and it's a big joke. And we're coming down, we're coming down a hill and there's two tractor trailers and we're coming about 15 mile an hour faster. Oh my. And he thinks I'm kidding. I'm playing with him. So, you know, he's not going to do nothing. And we're, I mean, all of a sudden it's like, hey, something's got to happen. So he powers at me and elbows me. And I mean, I look up and there's two track trailers. Look like they're stopped. You know, they're on <laughs> 65, we're on 80. Oh, quick left, past them on the left, or in- way on the median, maybe the left side tires a little bit in the grass. Lord I said, damn it, I told you to wake me up. He said, I didn't think you were really going to sleep, but uh, we don't do any of that stuff much anymore. <laughs> I'm, oh, my. I'm it was a, at, at the moment, it was a big deal. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. That, was, I'm scared. I'm scared right now. I can't even <laughs> laugh. <laughs> you and I have had some all nighters. We drove. Oh, we have. And we'll save those for other ones. All right. Um. What makes you happy? And uh, recently, you know, what makes you can happy could happen earlier this morning, whatever. But what makes me happy is our three girls, you know, they are really good to their mother, Brooke, Brandy, and Brittany, and the son-in-laws. They showed up. They put all our Christmas lights up, put our Christmas tree up, and it's work. And that made me really happy because now Kim is not on my ass to do all this. <laughs> so I, that that made me really happy. Yeah. So what about you? What makes me happy is that my kids are coming for Christmas. Oh. Dorothy and Sheldon. But they don't have to come put the lights up because... We're not that old yet. So I guess I'm happy that I'm not that old that someone has to come up and put on the lights in the Christmas tree. We're, we, that's going to be another show. We, we still have, and listen, let's not talk about it yet because we got good stuff. It's, it's a long winter, Kenny. Uh, not for us because we'll, we'll still go racing, but it, it is a long winter till the pit gate opens at the racetracks in April. I, and I know there's other races, but not April. everybody. Tra- April, Springfield starts the last week of February. Casa Grande starts the first week of January. You got to get your, you get your stuff ready, man. This is, you're going, okay, you're going to race. We're going to race next two weeks. You're not, but then you're going to the dome. We're not, yeah. but um, man, it's, it's a month off. That's it. You got to go in you January. You and I race year round. I know that the locals don't though. Some of them can't wait for that pit gate to open up in April at P- at, at Peevely, you know. So what makes you mad? If something makes you happy, what makes you mad? I, I got to get with it. I uh, I went into my closet and uh, yesterday, last night, 
and I just went to get a T-shirt that just is not doesn't have Schoenfeld on the front, doesn't have. I like my Schoenfeld Her Hermes t-shirt. on. No, it, no, it's a beautiful shirt. We love we love the Schoenfelds, and we love Hermes. A uh, man sent me this. What is Hermes? Well, uh, I don't know. I got to look on the back, but it, it's my nickname. <laughs> so that's what makes me mad. I last night, I'm just like, I want to go eat. I don't want to come in. You know, Kenny, we think we're normal, but we are oh, a small. No, I never, 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 never have thought you were normal. Don't have you ever, yeah, so. have you ever gone into a restaurant and looked at normal people? They, they don't have print all over their, their, there shirts. is no normal. That's true. There is no normal. Bottom line is every single shirt I have is is got print on it. So I am going to look for some just night. Hey, remember back in the day we'd wear we'd go get a what Levi's white t shirt. All the cool kids, the Fonz. Hey, he'd wear a white t shirt and a pair of Levi jeans. That meant you were a badass. Uh, yeah, so I what made me mad is I didn't have one t sh- one normal t shirt. So uh that made me mad. What about you? I don't know. I'm 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 lost. I just go I open my drawer and whatever t shirts are on top I grab. Today yeah. it was this one. It'll be yeah. a different one tomorrow. By the way, everybody, we're doing this right now, these first couple shows on our own computers. Uh, Dirty Mo Media is sending our specialized equipment. Well, it's I think being... they're holding up to see how the first couple shows go. But yeah, <laughs> hey, it's like it's like Definitely brother a Rusty. trial basis here. It's like brother Rusty says: edit all this up and make us look good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, current affairs. Um, I got one that's just funny. Current affairs. Uh, Make America healthy again, Maha. So <laughs> they're on Trump's private airplane, and it it's no secret Donald Trump likes McDonald's like millions and millions of people do. So <laughs> it says, you know, there's Kennedy. He's in charge of make America healthy again. And Don Jr., Donald Trump's boy, says one last time. One, one last McDonald's meal, you know, because everybody says McDonald's not healthy. But uh, that was current affairs. I, I thought that was a good joke. It was funny. One last time, one last meal, damn it. So uh, I thought I'd keep it lighthearted. Uh, you got any current affairs? No. Okay. No, that's your segment. Okay. Uh, you're you're the one that's always on social media learning what's going on. So. Let me show just, you something. Let, let me let, let me just look. Here's my phone. Okay. Right. Watch. Okay. You, you just go like. Here's my phone. Yep. Okay. See X right here. Yeah. I hit X. Okay. And then see trending. Okay. Mika. I don't know what that means. So the, our next segment is what's trending. That means. What is the most famous thing in the world right now? So it is serious. It has nothing to do with social media. It's, it's like if you picked up the Globe Democrat or you turn on the news. What's the hot story? What's trending? So trending. Uh, now listen, I don't want to be political, and I'm not going to be. But what's trending is, listen to this, MSNBC. They hate Donald Trump, and they have just decided the Joe Scarborough and Mika, they went, they've decided to bury their hatchet, uh, and they went to Mar-a-Lago to talk with Trump and basically create communication. Now, I'm sorry, but I just showed you all that. For anybody that's on Dirty Mo Media, that is... What's trending? Uh, what do you have to say about the people that hated Trump, hated him, hated him? He's Hitler. He's a Nazi. Now, now that they realize 
that their ratings are so bad that they got to talk to him. Uh, what do you think of that? Well, I think if your business is reporting the news, you kind of got to. How do you ignore the president of the United States? <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, you don't pick the president because of a, it's not a popularity contest. It's who's supposed to be who you think is going to run the country the best. And, yeah. you know, I'm very much bottom line and staying out of all that, all that. opinion stuff. Yeah. Most of the country, you know, the, the majority of the country thought that he was going to run it best. So he's going to be the next president. Yeah. We do not talk about politics. Please, people. Let's please stay out of that stuff. Yeah. We don't, we don't talk about politics, everybody. We talk about what's trending. Number one, number one trending. And that we show you on the phone. That's what's trending. We did not give you our opinion. Okay. I'm sad. This is the end of the show. It's the end of the Herman Schrader show, and it's life advice. This, this is, I, I'm thinking, after listening to this show and replaying in my mind, this could really be the end. This could be the I end. I mean, not just today. This could be the end. The end. Uh, that's sad because everybody loves it because <laughs> we're all centered. We're, we're so different. Um, you know, it's okay to be all screwed up as long as you realize you are. It's when you think you're okay, that's when you're screwed up. That is your life advice. Yes. That I, I did it for you. Okay. One more time, Kenny. Your life advice is what you just said. Can you please repeat that? <laughs> it's okay to be all screwed up as long as you know you're all screwed up. But when you're all screwed up and think you're okay, then you're screwed up. I love that. What great life advice. And uh, I know to... I'm fine. I know oh, yeah. I'm screwed up. Same here. My life. Yeah, advice, I know you are. Yeah. My uh, life advice here. Need is a this. second opinion. Oh, no. My therapist. Uh, well, when I was crazier, when I was a kid, I drove the teachers nuts. Yeah, I know that. You know this story. Yeah. I want, I the... want to know where that bottle is. So, uh, the school called my mom and said, Kenny's a good kid. He just won't stop talking. So they sent me to a real therapist. And uh, my God, I'm like eight years old. I think I'm in third grade or whatever, fourth, fifth grade, whatever it is. And if, if my chair squeaked, I'd squeak it because I'm, I'm seeking attention, damn it. It's third Teacher, child. Pay, yeah, third child. So I, I explain that to people all the time. Said he's not really that screwed up. He's a third child. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so they sent me to a real like psychiatrist, not a therapist, psychiatrist. And they're like, oh, he's got a sibling rivalry with his brothers. He he's seeking attention. I'm like, no, nope, that's not it. I, I I'm just I'm ready to go. Uh, so they they prescribed me Ritalin. Now remember it's. It's 1971. I'm born in 63, so do the math. Uh, they give me Ritalin. And um, come to find out, this is a no-no nowadays. You don't drug your kids. If they are the way they are. So It was the right thing to do to you at the time. At the time. Yeah, so it was my, the right thing. We, we were in the kitchen, <laughs> and my mom looks at me, and, and, and I'm dead quiet. And, but I don't know I'm quiet because I'm on Ritalin. And my mom goes, what happened to my Kenny? I haven't, I had enough wits that I'm like, okay, they think I'm crazy. I'll take this pill, you know, jokes kind of on them, you know? So I'm like, eh, I don't, I don't know him quite, but my mom goes, what happened to my Kenny? And I point, I pointed that bottle. I said, right there, my mom grabbed the bottle, threw it in the trash can. So to this day, when I aggravate, aggravate people, I'm like, don't, it ain't my fault. It's my mom's. She <laughs> after the races, if like we'd go to the truck stop and something to eat, you know, yeah. everybody didn't hang out at the you went truck stop and ate. We'd give you a dollar if you just not say a word for like two minutes. And usually you'd well, you'd 
hardly ever you get to Dower because you couldn't do it, but right. the, you'd fall asleep sometimes. So, yeah. So I, I've got to, I've got to give it up, everybody. The man you're looking at right now, Kenny Schrader, he loves me. Yeah. So so much to where uh, he said everybody left me at the truck stop, but you didn't have to take me home. And yeah, you always we took. We took you home. Everybody <laughs> left you. We, we took you home. And I love you too, Kenny. So, uh, yeah, all right. Uh, my life advice is pretty simple. Don't try to change people. We need all the friends. And all my friends come in all different shapes and sizes. And some just tell you how to do things. Some tell you this and that. And, uh you know, I, we've all got all types of friends and they're all useful. And uh, I enjoy watching you and Tom Hannock and uh, you got a lot of friends all across America. And I, I can guarantee you, if I said, tell me about Tom, tell me about Bud Hoppy. I would admire you. You used to take people 40 years older than you and you'd take them everywhere with you. And it was through you, Kenny, that I learned to cherish all your friends because they're all different. Don't try to change your friends. You're going to have all different types of friends. So that's my life advice. Well, that's it. Our second installment of the Herman Schrader show. Uh, could be the we last. Have, we'll have, we'll could, find out. Man, if they just edit this up and make us sound better, Charlie, I know you can fix us up. All right, everybody. Until the next Herman Schrader show. Do you have something to say? No, I was going to say goodbye, but it's taking you a while to get there. Well, we got to have an ending until the okay. next Herman Schrader show. Now, this is what we're, we're learning. Say goodbye, oh. Kenny. Oh, goodbye, Kenny. <laughs> goodbye.